What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the 18th episode of General Manager Mode Should the New Day Feud with Enzo and Cass this month. Four votes to nil. Yes, let's do this before WWE does it so we can claim the idea. Perfect. I just got done watching Raw. They haven't done that idea yet. They're in such a horrible sticking place of feuds, and we'll talk about that during the the match. But let's figure out what match we're going to be watching. Which match do you want featured on the 18th episode of General Manager Mode? We got to 12 votes. Excellent. Uh, I couldn't decide. I picked five of them. <laughs> I just didn't want to watch Gold Dust Jack Swagger. Neither did any of you. Kevin Owens versus Finn Balor. The main event of SmackDown in Baltimore, Maryland is what we will be watching this evening. All right? We begin SmackDown with the light heavyweight champion, Dean Ambrose. He defeated Daniel Bryan in his number one contenders match at Payback Pay-Per-View. And he comes out to address the crowd in Maryland. X-Pac makes his way out. He's also a little guy who had quite great success in WWE. Dean Ambrose handles him, beats him up, bloodies him, uh, gets charged 500, and that's really his problem. His problem is that he keeps busting people open. It's It really it just cuts his profits in half. He's up to $6,000 right now. Uh, Dean Ambrose needs to really get something going if he wants to make money in the bank. But he does defeat X-Pac in the opening match. Alright, the rivalry match. We saw Colin Cassidy and Enzo Amore make it to the ring. They were hyped up. This was their debut matchup and they were ready for it. But it was not enough. Big E, Kofi Kingston doing what needed to be done to win the match. And that's how it goes. We're going to see if we see any future between these gentlemen next week. Kalisto. The Cruiserweight Champion, who defended his Cruiserweight Championship at Payback Pay-Per-View against The Miz, was in a matchup against Heath Slater. Heath Slater and the former Social Outcasts have been doing awesome lately. Heath Slater was at a 1-1 -on record, not a 1-0 -on record. Uh, and he did end up losing this match. He falls to 1-2. Kalisto picking up another win. Kalisto's up to 21000 dollars and I'm for sure electing Kalisto to go into the money in the bank. He will be in it. Gold Dust versus Jack Swagger. This match was a nothing matchup. Uh, in fact I was watching Raw while I was this watching this matchup and uh, I was watching the Neville match at this point and I know Neville got hurt, got injured. Uh, it looked like he tore so when he's running and he does the slide under usually his foot slides with him but this time it caught and it just turned his knee in a bad way, and I would, I would bet that he's out for a little while, um, because at first he tries to walk on it, like he thinks that he, oh, he just kind of like sprained his knee or sprained his ankle or something. But then he does a couple moves and he goes, Nah, I, I can't, I can't do what we thought we were gonna do. Just pin me, get it over with. We're done here, and that sucks for Neville. But uh, yeah, so I was watching that, and Jack Swagger won this matchup. I think Jack Swagger was busted open. Let's see. No. That wasn't this match. Anyway, Jack Swagger debuting. Hasn't had a match yet in my universe mode, but he did win on his debut. I was tweeting about him on Roadblock, about how boring he was, and he does debut. So interesting for Jack Swagger. Good for him getting a win. Let's see what he can do with it. AJ Styles versus Neville. Okay, AJ Styles coming off of a loss at the payback pay-per-view. He is stalemate tied with Finn Balor for the battle for the Bullet Club. I'll finish that rivalry up one day. I don't know when, but one day. Uh, AJ Styles versus Neville was pretty good. Neville wins with a sit-down powerbomb, actually. So the same thing that Finn Balor used to defeat AJ Styles on SmackDown last week. Uh, it's the same thing that does AJ Styles in this week. AJ Styles loses to Neville. Is AJ Styles losing his nerve? He's uh, he's down to negative 4,500. He's at five and six record. Is uh, he's not going to be in Money in the Bank? It's just odds are slim for him. He's going to have to really struggle to get this uh, to SummerSlam. Uh, let's see, Neville. He's at one and one. He did have a singles matchup that he lost once. Uh, perhaps maybe to Finn Balor, or AJ Styles, or Kevin Owens, one of them. But uh, 
he's gotten on the right track. Seven superstar points, 1,000, so he's at the 1-1 one -one record. He got to 500. Let's see what he can do with that momentum now. And that leads us to the main event. The last time we saw these two gentlemen battling it out, they fought in a Falls Count Anywhere matchup. Kevin Owens lost to Finn Balor, and we haven't really seen Kevin Owens since. He is at a 2-2 two two record. Yeah, he tried to get some revenge, and he still lost. 2-2 um, two two record, $1,500. Let's see what he can do to Finn Balor. We are in Baltimore, Maryland. Kevin Owens making his way down to the ring for the main event. Kevin Owens is one of my favorite things going in the WWE right now. Uh, I mean, what can you really say? He does everything right. He wrestles good matches, believable matches. He's athletic, even though he's big. He fits his character to a T. He sat on commentary during Monday Night Raw, and he actually yelled back at Michael Cole. Shoot, man, I keep forgetting to do that, which I thought was brilliant. I keep forgetting to mute my actual TV. Um, he's just awesome. Kevin Owens is my new favorite thing. I got a Kevin Owens shirt for Christmas, and I'm so happy about it. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Finn Balor typically will come out of his demon mode when it's not a pay-per-view, but this is definitely the demon's entrance. Finn Balor getting a win over AJ Styles in the payback pay-per-view, and I guess he liked that feeling so much that the demon isn't going to allow Finn Balor to rise to the surface of consciousness. It looks like the demon is still going to dominate the personality. The demon has appeared on SmackDown. Let's see if it'll do him any favors. Finn Balor is coming into this matchup at 31 superstar points, $11,500. Four and five is his record. If he gets a couple of wins here in the next couple of weeks, he will be in money in the bank. He'll have enough money. And he can rise up the ranks of WWE, whether he wants to go for the light heavyweight title or the WWE title. Magnificent. The Demon is on SmackDown. So while we are waiting here, let's talk a bit about Monday Night Raw. I was actually looking forward to it. There were a lot of rumors that Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania is like a Kurt Angle town. So I was kind of like, maybe I just, just had my hopes too high. But I don't know, I didn't really like that Monday Night Raw. You know, the tag team matchup, I was just like, okay. I think the New Day is just going to win again because that's what they did at Roadblock. If, if League of Nations was going to win, they would have won at Roadblock. Uh, so I didn't really believe that match, even though it was an okay matchup. Uh, I liked the beatdown after it. That was fine. Uh, I think the strong points of the night was Kevin Owens on commentary, the tag team matchup. Uh, I actually really did enjoy. There was one segment... Uh, Dolph Ziggler Triple H was probably the strongest segment of the day and that was good that was good Roman Reigns beating random people up tossing things like an animal that's the Roman Reigns people want to see and I was very happy with that but everything else just seemed so stagnant I think I skipped over the Usos I skipped over the Divas I'm like I'm done nope 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 on Twitter it's like ah oh, it's gonna be the Usos versus the Dudley Boys and I'm like that's stupid just shove them in the New Day match with the League of Nations. Put both teams of the League of Nations in as a tag team. Put the Dudleys in as a tag team. Put the Usos in. Put the New Day in. Put uh, Enzo and Cass in. Uh, there might be another tag team I'm forgetting. Throw them in too. And then you get this seven-man thing where you don't really need Andre the Giant Battle Memorial. You could have an awesome tag team spot fest that could take over. Uh, looks like we're going to have Andre the Giant Battle Memorial. They didn't really announce it on Raw, or if they did, I skipped over it. <sighs> huh. I mean, it's an over-the-top rope thing. Kalisto Ryback I'm not interested in. I don't really care. Uh, yeah. 
you know, and I'm really mad that they might just give it to Ryback. Oh, jeez. It's going to make me sick. I don't want to think about Ryback winning. Oh, especially over Kalisto. I think Kalisto's good. I think what you need to do is have Kalisto actually separate from Sin Cara and be on his own. Sami Zayn was in another pretty horrible matchup. I don't know if it was his fault, but the matches haven't been that great. Uh, the only other thing about Ziggler and Triple H was that it was extremely loud. I could hear everything they were going to say. Uh, like, they were calling spots so loudly. Like, Dolph, you'd hear Dolph Ziggler tell the ref, push away, sweet chin, or push away super kick. And then the ref went over to tell Triple H, and then the ref went back over to say, okay, he's ready. Like, it was super loud and obvious, and I was like, oh, here we go. And then, bam, super kick. I'm like, yeah. It's, it's too loud. Too loud, Triple H. Um, well, near fall there for the demon. So, yeah, I don't know, man. It was... That Raw was a, a miss for me. I mean, the whole Shane McMahon and Undertaker thing, they were spilling over their words. It wasn't as exciting as the Triple H Roman Reigns ending, so I don't know. I just think maybe you put Triple H Ziggler at the end of the show and you bring back Roman at the very end to beat the hell out of Triple H. That would have ended the show on a much better note, left the fans happier than what they did. Uh, so... That's just me, though. Oh, uh, Dean Ambrose and Brock Lesnar was also very good. I also enjoyed that quite a bit. That was also great. So let's get talking about Finn Balor and Kevin Owens in my universe mode. Finn Balor's been feuding with AJ Styles. He picked up the rivalry win, technically, because I ended the rivalry, so he does get the payout. Kevin Owens has been a bit stagnant. He hasn't really been around too often. And the demon heading to the top rope. Is he going to hit the coup de grano? No, just a top rope elbow. Okay. Jacqueline is in Hall of Fame. I got to tell you, Jacqueline was a favorite uh, women champion of, women's champion of mine uh, way back in the day. Balor reverse DDT perfect setup and he goes for the pin he ruins it wow one two no Balor again as Owens up a kick to the temple Owens is down Balor gonna finish it here Kevin Owens has rolled into a horrible spot. It's going for the coup de gras. Ooh, dodge out of the way. Oh my god, Kevin Owens. Owens tossing Finn Balor into the corner. Huge shot to the back. Pushes him in, German suplex. Wow. Kevin Owens now waiting for the demon. Eyeing the demon, looking to go hunting for some demons. Spinning heel kick to the face of Owens. Finn Balor reversing the finisher. That means that he might have one in mind. Kevin Owens just reversed now. I'm not quite sure. I have no idea who has a finisher and who doesn't. Another German. Wow. The crowd on their feet here in Baltimore, Maryland. Tonight's matches haven't been that great. I thought Raw did better this week overall. Which is rare in this general manager mode. Balor tossing Owens into the corner. Balor has Owens in a horrible spot. Huge drop kick. It'd be brilliant if he could do the cannonball to Kevin Owens. It's probably not going to be how he wants it to go. Kevin Owens pushing his way out of it. Kevin Owens is a bull. Now Finn Balor just going to wrench on the arm of Owens. You can see the amount of torque that Finn Balor is putting on this hold. This is the difference between Finn Balor and the Finn Balor you're watching right now, the Demon. The Demon is psychotic as he gets thrown to the outside. Kevin Owens wiping some sweat off. He's 
Got, uh, he's got devious plans here that he's setting in motion, tossed into the steel steps, and he's choking the life out of the demon. Referee to a three count. And again. Is he trying to win by count out? A win by count out does not pay out any money, Kevin Owens. Keep that in mind. That is what turned the WWE and Ginger King universe on Randy Orton as I see a back suplex to the steel steps. Ouch. Luckily, they dull those steel steps. They look sharp, but they're not. They're not that sharp. They're just dull. They're, they're made out of steel. They'll hurt. Imagine being thrown. Uh-oh. 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 Owens. Package pile driver. Oh. Going for the pin. One. Two. Oh, a kick out. I was going to mention earlier about Finn Balor being tossed onto those steel steps. Imagine just being tossed out of an airplane and landing on the pyramids. That's about what it would feel like. has some sliver of life left, but he gets rolled up. One, two, three. It's a roll-up, roll-up victory here for Kevin Owens. He improves to three and two. $2,500 and a superstar points of 2019. Sorry, just 19. Math, Derek, math. Finn Balor goes to 33 superstar points. He'll stay at 1150 or 11,500, and he will drop to four and six. Kevin Owens with a positive record now. Point, see, uh, three of six, that's 60. Two, four, six, 60, yeah, point six for Kevin Owens. That's an okay record. Let's look at some of the damage here. Owens, this is where he was key. He was reversing Finn Balor nicely and then attacking with great precision and great power. Owens with a kick out there. The shots to the back. I really think that back suplex to the steel steps did a huge number on Finn Balor. Right here, watch this. Watch, watch, watch. Right here. Huge roll up. It might have looked like Finn Balor was under the ropes a bit. Referee out of position. One, two, three. Kevin Owens wins the day here in the main event of SmackDown. I do want to alert you to something cool I'm doing. Uh, maybe not for the Extreme Rules pay-per-view, but for the Payback pay-per-view, uh, especially on Tuesday. On Tuesday, which is tomorrow, or today, if you're watching it today. Or in the past, if you're watching it, like, whatever X amount of time in the future. Um, I'm going to be watching Super Tuesday 3. The very, I'm very political-based. I really enjoy watching it and following it. So, during that time, I think I might edit some highlights in with Lose Yourself by Eminem. And perhaps we'll get a pretty good video out of it. Uh, of course, it'll be, like, monetized by Eminem or something or whatever company wants to monetize it. But, so it won't be, like, for monetary gain or myself. It won't be anything. It'll just be something I kind of want to do. It's just a cool video package that you see all around the internet. I kind of want to try my hand at one of those. Uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a weird thing. It's a really weird thing, but it's what I do, right? I take, like, boiling hot showers, and my mind races. Uh, right, and it's just, I get these crazy ideas, and this is the idea that hit me. I just had this crazy imagination of, of Triple H versus Cactus Jack, and to a song, and it wasn't to Lose Yourself, it was actually to uh, Centuries by Fall Out Boy, but I feel like I can still do it to Lose Yourself, so I'm thinking about doing that, so it'll kind of make my theme songs for the pay-per-views a bit more important, and maybe it'll throw some extra eyeballs my way to my general manager mode. So I'm thinking about that. At any rate, let's move on. Okay, so no other business to conclude, I don't think. Uh, Triple H versus Billy Gunn will be your first matchup. We're going to vote on these matches. You have seven to choose from. So vote now. Look at these choices. Choose wisely. You can choose one or seven. doesn't really matter. The most votes It will be the match that we will feature on tomorrow's uh, episode. 
um, depending on what I do during the Super Tuesday political thing I was talking about, uh, we may talk about Lucha Underground, or we may talk about um, just Monday Night Raw more in general, or we'll just watch the match or something. But um, it really just depends if I get around to watching Lucha Underground or not. So, let's get to it. First match, Triple H versus Billy Gunn. Billy Gunn is the only man to have pinned Triple H way back when, in the first couple of weeks. Uh, we know that Cactus Jack did it uh, a month ago, but Billy Gunn has also done it. Triple H wants vengeance upon that. Uh, okay, let's see if Billy Gunn can make lightning strike twice on Monday Night Raw. Vote for that if you want to see it. Falls count anywhere. Nikki Bella versus Layla. Falls count anywhere. Why? Okay. Nikki Bella versus Layla. Falls count anywhere. Triple threat match. Edge, Booker T, Mankind. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Triple threat. Three awesome entertainers. Awesome uh, talkers. Awesome wrestlers, really. And I'm looking forward to this matchup. I think Booker T's 1-0. I think he's undefeated. I think uh, I don't think we've seen Edge yet, and Mankind is 0-2, so this should be a pretty interesting matchup. Mr. McMahon will fight a debuting Fit Finley. Fit Finley is uh, Finley, if you don't recognize him. He, he looks like that angry Irish bastard that used to be on WWE programming, but with a mullet. It's because it is. Uh, Mr. McMahon versus Fit Finley, so yeah, Irish war going here. Mr. McMahon's on a roll. He's defeated uh, Vader. Let's see if he can defeat Fit Finley and get on a little bit of a roll here. Rivalry matchup. Stone Cold Steve Austin will take on Brian Pillman. Brian Pillman last week lost his matchup as well as Stone Cold, but these two still have beef. They're still yapping at each other, and this all stems from that triple threat matchup they had a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago. And Stone Cold thinks that he can beat up Brian Pillman. Let's see. I mean, they both lost last week. They both lost their momentum. I think the, you know, the board is cleared. Let's start anew. Stone Cold, Brian Pillman, one-on-one. -on -one. Let's see what happens. Sheamus will debut against Kane. Kane is one and two, one and three, maybe. Um, Sheamus is debuting. He's brand new, so let's see if he can defeat the Demon Kane. Interesting. Corporate Kane, I guess. And then in the main event of Monday Night Raw, we will have the number one contenders matchup for the WWE Championship. 4-0. The Rock will take on John Cena, who is 10-0. These two are both undefeated. Someone is going to lose their undefeated streak here at Monday Night Raw. This is going to be an epic matchup. I can't wait to see who wins. Winner will face Triple H at Money in the Bank for the WWE Championship. Loser will spend the hard-earned money and automatically put themselves in Money in the Bank. I can't wait. And I, you know, it, it's another tough choice. Raw's putting out some great matches, and it's a damn shame that we, that I don't have a Twitch that we can't just show all of them. You know what I mean? But... I digress, here we go, The Rock vs. John Cena is your main event, those are your seven choices, go ahead and choose wisely, I think I know what one I'm voting for, I might vote for two or three, but that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching, Derek D. Ginger King, checking out, hashtag feel the burn.